weeks ago in lab, you learned about oxidation reduction reactions. And you remember the acronym LEOGER, which means that when you lose electrons, you have oxidation, and when you gain electrons, you have reduction. So in oxidation reduction reactions, or redox, we always transfer electrons, not make new products. So one thing we didn't take into account when we did that lab is whether or not things can be oxidized easily. So there's an activity series which tells you how easily a metal can be oxidized and depending on how easily a metal can be oxidized we can predict whether a redox reaction will occur and we can use an activity table to relate the how reactive each metal is with respect to oxidation. The table shown on this slide is the activities series, and it tells you how easily a metal can be oxidized. So essentially what it's saying is that things that are at the top of the table can react with anything below them in the table, but it's important to recognize what state everything's in. So a metal, lithium metal, can react with ions of anything below it in the table. So think about when you're doing a reaction, your solid is the one that you're trying to find above your ions in this table. Now we need to remember what we learned two weeks ago about predicting whether two things will react. So if we have copper chloride and magnesium chloride in a reaction, they're both in their 2 plus state and they're both ions. So we're not going to have a reaction because neither of them has electrons available to give up. Similarly, if we look at aluminum metal reacting with copper metal, we don't have any ions, so there's no place for electrons to move to, and we don't have any reactions. So they're both solids, nothing's going to get oxidized or reduced. In the last example, however, we have aluminum nitrate reacting with copper. So we have aluminum ions reacting with copper metal. In theory, the copper could give its electrons to aluminum and we could have a reaction. In practice, we need to check the chart and see if copper is more reactive than aluminum and the reaction will go. So if we look at our activity series table, we see that copper metal is far below aluminum ions on the table. And so we see that copper is less reactive than aluminum, and in fact this reaction cannot proceed. Now let's do an example where we predict what reaction products form from the reaction shown. Sometimes we're going to have to write no reaction. So if we're looking at the reaction of aluminum plus copper chloride, there are four steps that we should take to figure out what the reaction products are. So the first step is to determine if there is an electron donor and an electron acceptor. That's the same thing as asking, can one thing get oxidized and can the other thing get reduced? The second step is to figure out if the solid is above the ion in the activity table. So we need to make sure from our table that the reaction can proceed. Three, we want to find out what is formed in the reaction. And four, we're going to balance the reaction balancing ions, and then also balancing elements. Let's start with step one. If our reactants are aluminum and copper chloride, we have copper two ions present. We also have aluminum metal. So aluminum can donate our electrons, and copper two plus can accept the electrons. Now let's look at step two. Is the solid above the ion in the activity table? So our solid here is aluminum metal, and our ion is copper 2. So yes, aluminum is above copper in the activity table. That means that the reaction can occur. Now let's get to steps 3 and 4. In step 3, we want to know what is formed. So if we have aluminum metal reacting with copper ions, we know that we're going to form copper metal, if we recall lab 3, and then the other product is aluminum chloride. So let's do step 4. So in step 4, we want to balance the equation. So if we use the equations from the table that we just saw, we know that aluminum, when it gets ionized, forms aluminum 3 plus and 3 electrons. So that's directly from the table. Copper 2 plus, if you add two electrons, will make copper metal, and that's exactly what's happening in this reaction. So this is a re half reaction that we got from looking at the table. 
it was written backwards, so we just flipped it around. No problem. So now we have to make sure our electrons cancel out. So that's how we're going to balance the equation. So the aluminum equation, we can balance by multiplying the whole thing through by 2. So we'll get 6 electrons as our product. And the copper reaction, we can multiply through by 3. So we'll get 6 electrons on the reactant side. Our 6 electrons will cancel. And our balanced net ionic equation will be 2 aluminums plus 3 copper 2 plus will make 2 aluminum 3 plus and 3 coppers. The chlorides don't actually do anything in this reaction except help make a neutral compound. So we could add those back in if we wanted to, but they're not absolutely necessary. Now let's do a few example reactions. This would be a good place to pause so you can use your activity table and predict whether or not these reactions will occur. If they do, you should write the reaction products and balance the reaction. If they don't occur, then you can write simply no reaction. You can resume the presentation once you've finished answering the questions to reveal the answers. Let's look at the answers. For the reaction of iron metal with copper 2 plus ions, you can go back to your table and see that iron is above copper in the table, so we know that the reaction proceeds. So we will make iron 2 plus ions and copper metal. So the charges are balanced on both sides and the elements are balanced, so we don't have to do anything else to this equation. Copper reacting with zinc ions. Copper is below zinc in the activity table. That means that no reaction will occur. If we look at magnesium 2 plus reacting with lithium, we see that lithium metal is above magnesium in the activity table. That means that the reaction will proceed and we will form magnesium and lithium plus as our products. But we're going to have to balance it because we see that we have 2 plus on the left and 1 plus on the right from lithium. So we're going to have 2 lithium plus on the right side and then we'll have to have 2 lithiums on the left side to have a balanced reaction. Now let's look at barium reacting with NaCl. Barium is above sodium in the activity table. So barium will react with sodium ions to make barium chloride and sodium metal. But if we want to write a net ionic equation, we can just do that by taking out the chlorides since they're not actually doing any reacting. And we'll get barium metal reacting with two sodium ions to make barium 2 plus and two sodium. So by following this process in lab, you'll be able to determine what the activity series is of a number of metals that you'll be examining in the lab. You can use all the tricks that you learned from this video to help you with the quiz questions and then also with the questions after you do the lab. So keep in mind balancing reactions, how to use the activity table, and all the other tips and tricks you learned today.